I am, Mr. Taru. Okay, we just got done learning the law of sine, and now we're going to learn the other law that allows you to work with oblique triangles, or non-right triangles. That is the law of cosine. Now, we need both of these laws because you can't always do law of sine, and you can't always do law of cosine. To be able to set up the law of sine, you need to have a matching pair of angle and side. And when you have that pairing, like you know angle A and side A, you can set up the law of sine. <clears throat> However, if you don't have that, then hopefully the law of cosine will allow you to finish or solve that oblique triangle, finding the missing angles and sides, and possibly even area with a different formula. So we have law of cosine. We got a squared equals b squared plus c squared minus 2bc times cosine of a. And there's three formulas or three forms of this equation, but as you can see from the pattern, they all pretty much are the same. They're all exactly the same. The letters just move around. Whatever side you're setting the equation equal to, that's what corresponding angle you're going to use in the other side of the equation for the cosine function. And then everything else, the something squared plus something squared minus 2 times the, the same two somethings, that's just whatever's left. So if you're using sine b and angle b, then everywhere else in the equation you're talking about sides of a and c. So there's three forms, but really you can just memorize one of those formulas and you'll be just fine. When do you use these? You use these for um, non-right triangles, because if they are right triangles, why not just go back to Sokata? Uh, when given two sides and an included angle, that means that um, you're going to know two sides of the triangle, and they're going to come together to form a particular angle. Or you're just given all three sides of the triangle. Now these are both were both used in geometry when you were proving two triangles were either similar or congruent. So these are actually congruency theorems or similarity theorems. And that means that when you use law of so, uh, cosine, if it fits the pattern where you can use law of cosine, you're guaranteed that there's only one possible triangle. It's not that um, sort of, um, not arbitrary, but uh, you know, where you're doing law of sine and you, you, know, you have a possibility of having no answer, one answer, or two of them. To find an angle, uh, you also want to use law of cosine to find an angle opposite the largest side, since it may be obtuse. Now, when you do inverse cosine with your calculator, which can only work with functions, it's going to give you an answer between 0 and pi, or 0 and 180 degrees. So, if the angle happens to be obtuse, like say 97 degrees, you're going to get that answer. But if you reuse or attempt to use law of sine, to find the angle opposite the largest side, and that largest angle happened to be obtuse, the law of sine would not be able to give that to you. So if the largest angle was 97 degrees, which is 7 degrees away from um, 90, or it has a reference angle of 83 degrees, it's going to give you an answer of, instead of, I think I just said that wrong, Instead of 97 degrees, law of sine would give you an answer of 83 degrees, because law uh, inverse sine cannot give you answers beyond, well, negative pi over 2 or negative 90 and positive 90. It can't get, go beyond quadrant 1 in a positive direction. So again, if that angle was 97 degrees and you try to do law of sine, you would actually get 83 degrees from your calculator, which would be incorrect. So when you want to find that largest angle, it's always uh, suggested to use law of cosine to find that in case it is obtuse, you'll get the correct answer from your calculator. So here we have a couple of measurements, and again, we're kind of just basically doing geometry. We're working with shapes, which means that, at least as far as I'm concerned, you should always have a picture. So I'm not going to worry about drawing this to scale. I just want a place where I can put my numbers down. So triangle ABC. So triangle or angle C is 49 degrees. Side B is 7 units long, and side A is 6 units. So do you see how these, angle, these sides that are given are coming together to form the angle of 49 degrees? That's what we're talking about here with two sides and an included angle. That angle is in between the two sides given. Now, again, law of sine would not be possible for this question because there's no way of finding this side right off the bat without doing law of sine or cosine, and you can't find these two angle measurements in here because 
Well, we only have one angle out of the 180 degrees that are inside, so we can't immediately or easily find angle A or angle uh, B. So there's no way to set up that law of sine. We don't have that side and angle pairing. So the only way to do this is with law of cosine. So that being said, let's set that up. So sine C <coughs> squared, we're working on this one if you you know, want to actually look at the letters exactly where they should be in the formula. C squared is equal to 7 squared plus 6 squared minus 2 times 7 times 6 times the cosine of the included angle, which is 49 degrees. Now, <clears throat> do make sure that your graphing calculator or scientific calculator is in degree mode and not rating mode because you will get the wrong answer, even if you've set it up correctly. Now, I could do 7 squared is 49 and 6 squared is 36. Um, 2 times 7 is 14 and 14 times 6 is uh, 60 and 24 is, I believe, 84. But we're going to have to type this into our calculator anyway. So if you have a graphing calculator or a two-line scientific, you're just going to type that in all at once anyway. And <clears throat> you get 29.9. Now, you know, that's not the length of C. That's C squared. Don't forget, we're going to have to square root both sides of this equation. And when we square root both sides, we're going to get C the third side is equal to the square root of 29.9, which is, right off the top of my head, approximately 5.5. So here we go. Now, we need to find, we're going to find all the missing parts. We need to find angle A and angle B. Now, just to review with you again, I'm going to do law of sine for one and law of cosine for the other. That's really not necessary because once I find one of those two unknown angles, I can just subtract from 180 to find the third. But to review finding angle measures with sine and finding angle measures with cosine, um, we're going to, I'm going to do both the long way. But I'm running out of room here, so let me get this stuff erased. And let's find angle B. Now, angle B is opposite the longest side of 7. So I'm going to make sure to do law of cosine in case angle B happens to be obtuse. I don't think it's going to be because these are so similar in size. But I'm going to do law of cosine to find angle B just in case it's obtuse. I don't want to get the wrong answer from my calculator trying to do law of sine. So we have, let's see here, 7 squared equals 5.5 squared plus 6 squared minus 2 times 5.5 times 6 times the cosine of the angle we're trying to find, which is angle B. I'm going to go ahead and move everything over step by step so you see what I'm doing, and then I'm just going to pull the answer, say, out of the calculator or off my tablet that I'm using to uh, uh, quicken up the pace here. I'm going to, and I'm also going to keep all this in exact form. So, this 5.5 is not attached to anything. It's just a positive 5.5 squared. It's a positive 6 squared, so those are going to get moved over with subtraction. So it's going to be 7 squared minus 5.5 squared minus 6 squared. Now, the 2, the 5.5, and the 6, these are all attached to the cosine of B. This is all one term because they're all being multiplied together. So that's going to have to get divided away from the cosine of B. A lot of students will try and put all of these numerical values together, but if they do that, they're not following the order of operations because you can't add and subtract before you, these are all touching, so you can't do all that before you multiply. So that's why I moved the 5.5 and the 6 squared over individually, and now we're going to divide everything by, or both sides of this equation, by 2, 5.5, and 6. I'll multiply together. So negative 2 times 5.5 times 6 equals the cosine of B. Now, when you get this put into your calculator all at once or in pieces, it should come out to be 0.261 equals the cosine of B. Now, that cosine function has to get moved away from B. And what's the opposite of the cosine function? How do you undo the cosine function? You do the inverse cosine function. So, B is equal to the inverse cosine of 0.261.
put that into your calculator, make sure it's in degree mode, and you're going to get 74.9 degrees. Okay, so angle B is 74.9. So this is our largest side, so this should be our largest angle. If it's not, we've made a mistake. Uh, it turned out to be acute, so we could, have done law, we could have done law of sine, but again, we didn't necessarily know that ahead of time. Now, to find angle A, we can just simply subtract these two measurements from 180. And that's fine, especially when you're taking a test and it's time and you don't want to run out of that time. But if 74.9 is incorrect, then... I'm not going to know that. It's going to carry over to my, first, my other answer. So I'm going to do law of sine. And just to review is with you as well the other law. And then also if they add up to roughly 180, you know, there might be some round off error, then we probably have done all of our work correctly. So what would this look like? How do you find an angle measure again using law of sine? Well, you need a matching side and a corresponding angle. So we're going to have, uh, let's see here. 7 over the sine of 74.9 equals 6 over the sine of A. Our variable is in the denominator, and you can't solve for a variable when it's in the denominator. So I'm going to cross multiply this equation or multiply both sides by the sine of A and both sides by the sine of 74.9 to cancel out that division. So we have 7 times the sine of A equals 6 times the sine of 74.9. We need to divide both sides by 7. So we have the sine of A equals 6 times the sine of 74.9 degrees divided by 7. That means the sine of A is going to come out to be... 嗯。Well, that's what happens when you do things off the top of your head. I picked a different number, so I'll be right back with a calculator. Okay, so get this thing turned on. Current document. All right, so I need 6 sine 74.9 divided by 7 comes out to be 0 .87, 8 .827. Actually, 8 if I round off. And then A is going to be equal to the inverse sine of that. So A comes out to be the inverse sine of 0 .828, which comes out to be 55. I'm going to round off a little bit here, 0 .9. So, 55.9. And since I've gone off script here a little bit, let's just make sure these do add up to roughly 180. So 55.9 plus 49 plus 74.9 and 179.8. So that point two of a decimal place is simply because of a little bit of round off error I did there. So again, you want to, you know, you can find any measurement you want, both, you know, um, sides or angles using law of cosine. Well, I guess not all the time, but occasionally. But when you are looking for those missing angle measures, you know, you do have a choice, but please do not try and find the angle opposite the largest side, again, using law of sine, because if you do, you could possibly get an incorrect answer. Again, if that angle happened to have been 97 degrees, law of sine would have probably come out to be probably come out to be 83 degrees. Actually, not probably, but it would. So don't use law of sine to find the largest angle. I'm Mr. True. Go do your homework. Woo!